Hi, I'm Chris Anderson, Senior Product Manager. And on behalf of my colleagues, Wayne Lee and Nina Hosera Salafi, welcome to our breakout session. Engage customers with new apparel image style guides. There are four components. We'll open with some tips on how to build great listings, which will lead us to a deeper dive into general best practices for your product images before finally discussing how to create great apparel images that are both welcoming to all customers and engaging with professional style. If you have any questions over the course of this session, you can submit them to us directly through the event platform. Just type them into the Q&A box. The most popular submissions, based upon audience upvoting, will be answered live at the end of this session. Now here's Wayne Lee to get things started. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. My name is Wayne Lee, and I have been here at Amazon for nine years, in which I have helped over 7,000 new selling partners with building their business with Amazon. My current role is on the new seller success team, where we provide free business development support for professional selling accounts that started selling in 2021. So if you happen to see a hello email, and it comes from an at amazon.com email address, feel free to reply to talk to myself or one of my peers, and we look forward to supporting your growth with selling in the Amazon store. Now, before we dive deeper into the topic of apparel imagery, I'm going to share with you some quick tips on how to build a great apparel listing. One of the first choices you will need to make is, do I build a new listing or do I match to an existing? In order to match to an existing listing, your product must be 100% identical to the existing detail page. That means you need to verify the title, description, bullet points, and everything else on that detail page, especially the brand name. If you're not selling that specific brand name of product, or if your product differs from the detail page, then you should avoid matching to the existing offer. Remember, looking identical is not the same as being identical. Since this part focuses on how to make great listings, let's assume we need to create a new listing. So when building a new listing, the big areas to focus on are brand name, product name, key product features, description, and images. Two areas that are not shown on here but will be important to the listing are product IDs and search terms. Now, these key seven fields are what help the product be found and engage the customer to make the decision to buy your product. Let's start with discussing more about branding. Why is branding important? Brands can help products stand out. They build loyalty and communicate value of attributes like fit, quality, satisfaction, that's just to name a few. When you build a listing in apparel, you'll be asked to provide a brand name for the product, and you may need to seek approval to use that brand name. One of the ways to get approval if you're using your own brand name is through the Amazon Brand Registry Program. It is a program we offer to pending and registered trademark owners that provide enhanced tools to help you grow your brand on Amazon. Some of our most popular features of the brand registry program include a content, brand stores, sponsored brands, and videos. And with apparel, videos are an incredible way to enhance the listing. Videos help show the product's fabric movement, the flow and texture in a way that cannot be convened by still images alone. All right, now that we've discussed branding, let's talk about product IDs. One of the required fields you may need to fill in is the product ID. This is where the GTIN barcode will go. This is probably one of the biggest questions out there about creating a listing. Are you required to have a barcode to list apparel products on Amazon? Now, before I get to the answer on that, I want to bring us all up to speed on what is a GTIN barcode. GTIN stands for Global Trade Item Number and was created by an organization called GS1.org. They invented a barcoding system that can be scanned electronically, making it easier for products to be tracked, processed, and stored. If you are unfamiliar with what it looks like, you can often find one by looking at the hang tags of some of your favorite apparel items. Okay, so now the answer. If you are retailing products, you should always look for the barcode or contact the brand owner to get the barcodes. But let's say barcodes don't exist for the products you intend to sell then as long as the brand is not on the required GTIN list, 
then you can apply to receive a GTIN exemption. And no worries, if you decide to use our Fulfillment by Amazon program, our system will automatically generate an Amazon barcode you can place on the products for the Fulfillment by Amazon program. This exemption program is particularly beneficial with apparel brand owners, as each size and or color requires a unique barcode, and getting a multitude of barcodes can quickly scale your costs. For those owner, brand owners who want to use barcodes, we ask you to refrain from purchasing them from bulk sites, and instead register with gs1.org and obtain barcodes in which you own the certificates too. One of the biggest reasons why is if the barcode is used by multiple selling partners, and there's a conflict in the data, we may not always be able to discern who has ownership of that UPC code, which could then cause a listing to become removed from the store. Being able to demonstrate that you own the GS1.org certificate will help us discern who has the right to the barcode in question. Okay, now let's talk about the next important field, the product name. The product name is a required field. It is the first element of the listing people will read. I want you to remember three key words, clear, concise, and accurate. Your goal is to get them to click on the product so you're only one click away from buy now. We find that products names that follow this philosophy perform best in apparel. I'm going to share with you a formula that will help you be clear, concise, and accurate. The formula has four major components. You start with the brand name. Brands, as we mentioned, are a powerful asset to the listing. Perhaps most importantly, it helps customers identify the brand quickly as people often become loyal to the apparel brands they feel meet their fashion needs and fit them best. Next, department. People want to know right away if this product is a match for them or the person they're buying for. Some examples would be women's, toddler, unisex adult. Next, are the style elements. Style elements provide those descriptors that are not only great for search, but clearly and accurately describe the cut, shape, design, and fashion of the item. These terms are great for search purposes as they help surface the product when a specific style of clothing is being searched for. Examples of style terms would be uh, three-quarter sleeve, above the knee, lace belted, V-neck, and many more. Now, you want to limit yourself to about three core style elements, as more elements may confuse the customer. If you have more style elements to add for search, they can be placed in the search terms, which we will discuss here shortly. And the final part is clothing type. Clothing type is the core of what the product is. Examples would be dress, cargo shorts, blouse, or suit. The clothing type helps to anchor what the product is to the customer and for the general search purposes as well. The question you may have at this point is, well, can you show me what this formula looks like in action? In taking the example we showed you before, you can see how this popular brand is following the formula closely. They start with their brand, then department, go into the specific style elements that make this product unique, and then anchor the title with the clothing type. Now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you may have some additional search phrases, style elements, or clothing types that apply to your product. So what do you do with those? You'll want to add them to the keyword search terms. The search term bucket is a high index search field of the listing. They're not visible to your customer, but help to better index the product with our search engine. Here are some helpful tips with search terms. The product titles, brand, and company name are already searchable, so you don't need to repeat them or other words it already has. Capitalization is not required, and there's no need for punctuation, just spaces between words. Now, let's talk a little bit about some don'ts with search terms, or the listing could get suppressed. Avoid using other brand names due to IP protections. Please refrain from using ASINs, abusive or offensive terms, restricted products, and stay away from claims like pesticidal claims, such as antimicrobial. Any of these added to the search terms can lead to a listing suspension. Okay, so now we have covered brand, product IDs, product name, and search terms. Now let's talk about the final areas of the key product features, which are key product features and description. The product description and key product features can be found under the description tab. 
So what is the difference between a product description and a key product feature? Key product features are shorter phrases or sentences that are often written in the form of features and benefits. Descriptions may often include those key product features, but you will want to take it a step further and add more experiential context if possible. You want to come as close as you can to giving the customer an in-store experience with your description. So let's break this down a little bit further. You may be wondering, well, what is a feature and what is a benefit? Features are facts. Benefits are the tangible value to the customer. When I'm helping a selling partner with creating a listing, I will often ask them, if you could tell your customer five things about the product that would make them say yes, what would they be and why is it important to them? Here are three examples of features and benefits. The features are coded in purple and the benefit portion is coded in blue. In the first example, I love how the author appeals to the fashion side of the customer with the lived-in look. The second example dives into the time savings of not having to iron the product. And that third example, that example adds that experiential touch where you can almost imagine yourself relaxing on a couch with a warm cup of coffee and binge-watching some of your favorite shows. And now, the description. Now, we know there are some pretty long descriptions out there, and I'm here to let you know, it isn't how much you say, but what you say. This isn't the place to spam a ton of keywords. I mean, that's what the search terms are for, but rather your big sales pitch to get the customer to want to click buy now. Be sure to include the basics. You got fabric content, care, detailed information that enhances the images, but then take it a step further and dive into the experience of this product. Capture the customer's imagination and place them in a setting where they feel like they are wearing the item. Think about all the questions you would have if you were buying the product. How does it feel? When would I wear it? How will it fit? What is the fashionable or unique elements about it? How would it fit my lifestyle? Take the customer through the decision journey to buy the item. So as I wrap up my part, here's a brief summary of the highlights we discussed today about the key text elements of a listing. But instead of recapping this, I'm going to instead leave the audience with a challenge. Here at Amazon, we talk a lot, and I mean a lot about working backwards. You start with the customer and you work backwards to the product. If you're new to selling in the Amazon store or planning to sell in the Amazon store, I want you to do your research and begin drafting the listing with the customer as your primary focus. This will often help you identify your strategy and how you will differentiate the product to convert sales with satisfying the customer as your guiding light. And for you veterans out there, take a second look at the listings. And do the listings embody the points we discussed today? Or can you take it a step further to keep engaging the customer, but more importantly, gaining new customers. And as much as I want to keep talking about how to craft the words on a listing, we all know a picture is worth a thousand words and perhaps the biggest factor that gets people to click buy now. And with that, I will turn this part over to Chris from our imaging team. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Wayne. Now let's move on to engaging customers with your images. One of the best ways to convey information about your product is through your images. Customers rely on a listing's images to understand how the product can be used and determine if it will fit their sizing or stylistic needs. Brand owners can use images as one of the most effective means to convey their brand voice, differentiate their products, and build recognition and credibility with customers. Images are a basic requirement for every product on Amazon as every ASIN must contain at least one image to be visible to customers through search and browse. However, images that convey incomplete or inaccurate information about a product or that fail to build credibility with customers can drive higher rates of abandonment and returns. Let's take a look at this example of a DVD player advertised as a home theater system. With only one image of the front of the device, customers made their own assumptions about what constitutes a home theater system, leading to poor reviews and returns. 
Customers don't fully understand the product because of ambiguous product details in the listing, coupled with an incomplete image set that doesn't provide the detail required by customers. This seller could have delivered a much better customer experience by presenting the product from all angles and including close-ups of key components and connection ports. Now let's look at this competing product, where customers have a full suite of product images to look at and understand the capabilities and limitations to connect with other devices. While the reviews on the product's performance aren't perfect, customers clearly understand whether this product will connect to their existing devices. We also recommend that you upload images that are large enough for the customer to zoom in and interact with. In this case, uploading an image large enough to enable zoomability allows the customers to clearly see each of the connection points on the device. So how do you know if you have the right images? Amazon provides image guidance in Seller Central through help pages and style guides. Help pages contain information on our quality standards and minimum requirements. Category-specific style guides provide guidance on how to present the best imagery for your product to engage customers and give them a complete visual understanding of the product. Good image sets provide the customer with the full view of the product through multiple angles. Include images that highlight details of the product that will be important to customers as they use it. Each of these examples depict listings with image blocks that contain six or seven images, each of which work together to provide a full view of what the product is, what it's constructed from, and what it can do. Good image sets provide the customer with detailed views of the product with large, zoomable images. Customers want to be able to see the material or the fabric the product is made with and see fine details to make an informed purchasing decision. Strong images accurately represent the product, but also look professional with strong lighting and styling elements to establish credibility with the customer. Our style guides provide detailed guidance on how to create and prepare your images to make them look their best. Be consistent and use the same lighting and colors for your image set. Consistency can also help you build brand recognition of your products among customers. Leverage infographics to highlight key elements or features of the product in your secondary images. Images are often the first component of the listing that customers will see and offer a great way to quickly communicate why customers will love using your product. As you think about creating listing images for your listings, I encourage you to take a moment to think about what the customers hope to gain from your images. Pictures are worth a thousand words, right? Well, customers can quickly scroll through all of your product images but it takes more time to read through all the text details on the listing. So your best bet is to provide as much information as you can in your images. Please consult our style guides for more information. Now I'd like to invite you to think a little more about the listings for your products. Are you reaching all of your customers? Let's take a look at imagery from the perspective of diversity. And to do that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Nina, Hosur Salafi. Thanks, Chris. Did you know that 98% of the product imagery in our Amazon stores is provided by you, the Stelling Partner? So ultimately, this is your opportunity to bring diversity representation forward. But how? Well, let's start here. Take a look at this image. What do you see? Did you notice this is a baseball glove for a left-handed player? It's actually a really hard image to find. And oftentimes the image for a left-handed glove is just not available, leaving the person who needs this glove to make a decision based on an image that is not for them. So, okay, maybe you don't play baseball and maybe you aren't left-handed, but for the kiddo who needs this glove to play ball, 
This image means acceptance. It means being seen. Now, let's take a look at this image. What do you see here? Or rather, what do you see that's missing? Perhaps it's hard to notice, but these jeans are adaptive clothing. The garment is purposely designed for differently abled people who need these magnetic buttons and Velcro closures to simply get dressed. Now, knowing this, would you change anything about the model in the image? And what other images should we be seeing? And a quick side note, this is the only image in our Amazon store to represent this pair of jeans. No close up, no detail shots. So what does diversity actually mean? Well, this is my job, to ask this question constantly and in every direction, to understand what our customers wanna see in our imagery in regards to diversity representation. Amazon values all forms of diversity, including size, gender, physical ability, race, ethnicity, age, and this list continues to grow. Who do you see in this set of images? The images on Amazon should reflect people, all people, and many different types of people. We learn, research, and share our knowledge with our studios and image providers to make diversity-focused decisions for product images, video, and visual content. But why are we striving for diversity? It's because our research is teaching us that our customer wants to see differences in the people modeling clothes. And when a model is not in the image, they still want the product displayed in a way that shows they're represented and understood. In fact, research is showing us that our customer is delighted by seeing diversity represented, and 42% would actually switch to a retailer committed to diversity and inclusion. They appreciate when retailers showcase models who are diverse, relatable, and real. In fact, these are words we hear over and over. This appreciation for both is both for functional reasons, to understand how items look on themselves, and moral reasons, because diversity is inherently a good thing. The quotes you're seeing come from our customers. They're not perfect women. I love that which relates to cultural shifts that celebrate and recognize beauty in all types of people. On the other hand, we read this quote as a cautionary tale. It feels like a model is selling me clothes. I won't say I'm offended, but I don't feel connected. The word real comes up a lot in our research, but let's unpack this a bit because all people of all sizes are real. But when the customer mostly sees one size, one age of a physically abled person represented over and over again, they notice that many are missing. And what we are hearing is that customers have been ready to see themselves represented in imagery. And not just themselves, everyone else too. In fact, we asked men and women in 10 countries about the importance of seeing different diversity attributes while shopping for clothes. And we learned that the majority of participants consider body size, age diversity, physical ability, and skin tone to be very important attributes to see when shopping for clothes online. We also learned they want to see a mix of people, not just themselves and not just one type. In fact, 70% told us they prefer to see clothes on a model who is size medium, large, or extra large. And we've also learned that customers love to see more than one model in an image set for a single product. But what if your imagery doesn't include a model? How do you consider diversity here? Well, we've learned to make sure to upload the left-handed glove. That's a good start. Uh, but considerations can also include things like setting out a left-handed can opener in a kitchen environmental shot, or considering if the room set would be wheelchair accessible. Consider perhaps whether a room set seems financially attainable for someone on a budget. We've learned our customers notice these considerations and feel more represented and more confident about the inclusive stance of the brand. Okay, so what are three steps you can take to building more diversity into your imagery? Well, first, 
Review your catalog. See if you're representing more than one type of person or more than one type of lifestyle. Second, if you do need to change, start small and be forward looking. And finally, remember diversity representation is not about taking something away. It's about adding, adding different types of people, different physical features, different lifestyles to show your brand understands that customers want to be seen and want to know you consider diversity important. Remember these images? Well, if you're wondering, yes, they came from our studios. We're here to provide guidance and learnings to support you as you create your own content. But if you'd like, we do have studios around the globe who can also do it for you. We know that people, no matter where they fit in on the spectrum of diversity, want to know that Amazon and all the brands we represent are for diversity. We are committed to increasing the presence of different people and different circumstances until our stores simply represent humans. To learn more about our services, send us an email to get the conversation started at photography-services at amazon.com. Now, let's talk about some fashion apparel. So, selling in Amazon fashion comes with a unique set of customer needs. This is a category space that is all about the visuals. Shopping for clothing is not just about buying something that's useful. It's also an experience that requires a customer to identify something about oneself and then find the right piece of clothing to express that. It's a very personal and oftentimes emotional journey. In fact, customers tell us in fashion things like, style is important to me. It's a part of my personality. And I wanted an outfit that would make me feel confident. The style guides are intended to systematically capture the needs of shopping in this space and articulate how to create imagery that satisfies them. The style guides help you make running your store easier and more efficient by ensuring they capture Amazon's requirements for selling on the site when it comes to product imagery. And for apparel specifically, we have taken our learning directly from our customer and feedback and preferences because we want them to trust you and your products. You know, we hear them when they tell us things like, pictures rarely show all the details and the descriptions can be misleading. Or, it's hard to tell which retailers are reputable. Or even whether it was coming from someone that was going to make a trustworthy quality product or if it was just going to be junk and that's why it was cheap on Amazon. So the guides serve to help you avoid creating these common frustrations we hear from customers. Now, let's take a look at three customer insights that have played a major role in shaping the fashion guidelines. Number one, fit. It's the biggest customer problem in shopping for apparel on Amazon. In fact, the first and most basic step we know how to help address customer concerns about fit is to display your clothing on a human model. The style guide, therefore, has a standard that all adult apparel should be shot on a human model for main images. The style guide also gives recommendations for how to best shoot different types of photos, videos, and how many, um, and to show various fit and fabric movement and brand voice or identity. Secondly, I know we touched on this previously, but I'll reiterate again, customers love to see many different types of people wearing the clothing they're shopping for. Customers want to feel represented, understood, and also want to see how an article of clothing will look on someone who looks like them. We want to create a consistent, elevated, and inclusive experience for all who shop at Amazon Fashion. So diversity should feel genuine. Allow the clothing to remain the primary focus while also celebrating the distinct characteristics of our diverse customer base. Hair enhances the outfit and brand personality, but be sure to keep hair behind the shoulders so focus remains on the clothing. But you can also use hair types, textures, color, and styling to show off individuality. Also remember, main images will be displayed at half face, so accentuate physical diversity characteristics that will remain in frame. 
the fit and styling of clothing is also a great opportunity to accentuate diversity while highlighting your brand voice. And especially in the variant images, express a product story with stylistic choices that inspire and resonate with our diverse customer base. Finally, customers want to trust that the items they purchase on Amazon are authentic and of good quality. And of particular concern are offerings from third-party retailers on Amazon. Customers describe inconsistencies when ordering from these sellers. And they're frustrated by poor fabric quality and questionable authenticity of the items they receive. They want to trust that the quality, price, and brand meet their expectations. So we have seen that consistently building trust results in reducing the cognitive load on customers which means that rather than having to think about, do I trust buying from the seller? They only have to think about the important things for a fashion customer. Do I like this piece? Do I want to wear this? The guide considers all aspects of where consistency can come into play and even gives you an overview of other places your product imagery can be placed. Therefore, you'll see the guide recommend standard practices that not only include shooting on a human muscle uh, on a human model, but also things like consistent crop by product type, consistent types of images, consistent number of images, consistent lighting, and consistent technical requirements to allow zoom and to avoid grainy pixelation, and so on and so on. So as we come to the end of the presentation. You should all know a bit more about how to create great imagery to engage your customers and improve your listings. As you build your listings, I encourage you to think about your customers and what they need to know about your products. Use what you've learned today to present the most important features in a welcoming manner to engage customers with your products and with your brand.